Alright, what's up YouTube? Richard Ojeda back here. And recently I've been watching a lot of videos about oil filters and their build quality. And I've also seen videos about motor oil. And pretty much as long as this name brand from a reputable company and it's full synthetic, you'll be fine. Uh, I mean, you could argue, argue all you want. Um, full synthetic is, uh, it gets the job done. And also, the I'm gonna try out this hyper lube uh, oil supplement I never really put any additive in there I don't know if it would work or not but this is the point of this video uh, I'm doing this oil change as of August 22nd 2017 and I don't dry very often but I usually when I go to school I always do my oil change for I could start school with fresh oil and then once it's over I usually do an oil change around that time so roughly four months and so this is all I have for the oil change uh, three quarts of uh, Kendall liquid titanium full synthetic 5w30 and also with this hyperlube oil supplement you have to use 20% of that um, with your with your motor oil and also I have this Fram ultra synthetic typically like I've seen videos of Fram being like a shitty company but honestly the well at least the extra guards uh, even though their build quality isn't that good like the end caps are usually it's not cardboard but it's something else it's, uh, it's like some sort of fabric um, I mean they're not that bad I've used them in the past and I've also done oil samples and they said the oil filter did perfectly fine but it was it was just for curiosity out of that out of those uh those filters and but I'm gonna try this ultra synthetic uh, I don't know why I just I just took that one instead of the other competition so yeah I'm going to do this oil change on a 1988 Honda Civic LX with a D15 B2 engine and I will see you in the next part. Drain the oil, we've put on the new oil filter, we did all the stuff you need to do, lower the car. Now, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to empty all of this and then right here it has the ounces and milliliters. I'm going to empty out the whole quart and then I, since I have to put, to be exact it's 22.4 ounces but I'm just going to round it around like slightly a little below 24 ounces so that's what we're going to do. Okay, so what I did off camera because I, I don't want to use one hand. So with the Hyperlube, uh, I took out around the 24 ounces. And then like I just used this bottle as a measuring tool, so slightly below 24 ounces. So I just used this as a measuring and then I'm going to pour the rest in here. I'll let you guys see how good it flows. Let's see if it shows up good in the camera. I hope it does. But I use the whole, the whole reason I use Hyperlube is because uh, even though Lucas does offer a pure synthetic oil stabilizer, uh, I don't know why, but like I actually called them by the phone and uh, it sounded like they were selling me a product, which I mean, I can't blame them. Uh, that's what they do. And then I also called up Hyperlube and uh, they're actually really cool people. So I just decided to go with this one better. So, if you compare this to the Lucas oil stabilizer, this is way less viscous. And that's something that I like personally because if it's too viscous, uh, it's not my thing. One more thing I'm also going to do since, uh, I mean, it's. I think it's a pretty necessary step since this thing is pretty viscous. I'm just gonna open up the oil, the other quart of oil, just add some in there, shake it up, and try to get all the all the material I can out of it. All right, uh, the, the quick quick little cutscene. Uh, if you guys are curious, I mean, this is the Kendall oil. Uh, I got it from a 99 cent store. It wasn't 99 cents; it was 2.99, but it's still a good deal for full synthetic and um it's actually really nicely packaged like if i just i just broke the seal right now well the bottle cap and it still has this seal right there where it says uh let's see if it focuses 
All right, there you go. So it says Kendall, and it's actually it's, it's pretty cool. Time to pour in the good stuff. That's how the slogan goes, or something. That that's the color of the engine oil. I don't know. I hope you see it good, but for synthetic, it's I've seen darker synthetics and I've seen lighter synthetics. Usually the lighter ones are just straight full synthetic, but the darker type of full synthetics like Valvoline Max Life, that's actually the uh, the the oil I typically use. The full synthetic Max Life uh, is slightly darker for the high mileage additives. But yeah, this this one seems nice. There's another quart. So I already put in the 22 ounces of the world famous Hyperlube and three quarts of the of the motor oil. So let's just see if it's on the dot or not. I haven't turned the engine on yet. Let's see. Focus, god damn it. Ooh, perfect. Right on the right on the money. All right, so let's just put that back in. I still haven't turned it on so the level should go down but everything should be good. I calculated everything correctly. Everything adds up to 3.7 quarts so we are good. Okay YouTube, we are back with the oil analysis from Blackstone Laboratories. So let's take a look at the comments. So it says right there, Hyperloop indeed, indeed raised the viscosity bringing it range of a 5w40 so obviously you need to stick with the viscosity that your vehicle recommends and mine equips a 5w30 so uh that's not good that it went it increased oil viscosity and just keep in mind that you have to use the one to five ratio so you have to use 20 percent of the of the hyperloop oil supplement and the rest is the oil you use so let's continue reading on. Potassium and sodium came down a bit even after a long oil run, showing less coolant. We're not sure what's responsible for that, but the engine isn't out of the woods yet. So the reason I forgot to mention in the slip that you have to submit when you uh, when you do the oil analysis, but I forgot to mention that I added half the bottle of this head gasket fix because uh, in the past oil analysis they said that coolant goes into the oil and uh, my first uh, thought was that oh it's a head gasket and because it's the original engine it's never been torn apart original head gasket so I mean I decided to buy, to buy the uh, bars head gasket fix it was $30 so that's pretty pricey for a, a additive but um, it's worth a shot instead of changing the whole head gasket but Figured out it wasn't the head gas, it was the water pump, but all right, enough of that. Let's get back to the oil. Uh, some of the sodium uh, may be residual from using Valvoline, which uses it as an additive. There's a good website that I learned about called the PQIA.com, which, which stands for the Petroleum Quality Institute of America. And for the past year, I've learned so much from that website. Other websites as well, but that's the main one. Since they have a uh, a lot of virgin oil analysis on a variety of engine oils, conventional, semi synthetic, and full synthetics, diesel and gasoline oils. So it's really it's a really helpful a website. And so I I looked at the Valvoline full synthetic uh, virgin oil analysis. They also have the Elemental, uh, and they have sodium as a antioxidant. So, but with the virgin uh, oil of Valvoline, the sodium in parts per million is around 50 to 60, maybe even 70, but not as high as mine because 
the coolant does uh, contain sodium. I mean, the 50 to 70 parts per million in Valvoline is is safe is safe for the for your engine because it neutralizes acids for longer uh, drain intervals. So let's go back up there. Lead. Wait, what does it say? It says getting into a copper and lead are lower now um, that the sum of the restore added was washed out. So you can't get all the oil out every oil change. Like whatever's left is going to stay in there. So restore is in my oil, but uh, restore isn't isn't bad at all. Two thousand miles or less. I just want to mention that the miles I put. I mean, I don't put that much miles, but just keep in mind those are city driving, so it adds up. And city driving is more tougher than highway. If you guys don't didn't know that, so. These are my elements in parts per million. Copper and lead are lower. Potassium is lower. Titanium shows up. You normally wouldn't have this in a engine unless it's like a high performance engine, but titanium is a very good additive and high end additive that oil companies use. I think the only two oils I, I know that use titanium is Kendall with liquid titanium and the Castrol. So it's a good substitute for the ZDDP because it doesn't contaminate the catalytic converters. So I really dig that oil. I use the Kendall full synthetic. So I'm going to tell you my experience with the Hyperlube oil supplement. Um, so when I did the oil change, I, um, I did the oil change 20% Hyperlube, 80% oil. And it had a more rough idle since it did increase the viscosity to a 5W40 and which caused my car to vibrate. So I switched the oil um, because I just wanted to make sure that, that that I didn't have any mechanical problems. So switched it back to 5W30 and the vibration went away. But then um, two months passed by. Then it was October. And then... Um, I was like, I'm going to just give it a second chance. I don't care if the car vibrates. And when I put it back in, it wasn't vibrating as much, but it was, it was still vibrating. But it slowly went away. Maybe it just had to be broken in. So, you know, I drove it. I drove it like that. And overall, this does quiet down the engine because the valve train is usually what makes all the noise. And that quieted down. Even even on the highway, it's noticeable. It's noticeable overall, but it's more noticeable on the highway. And also, uh, let's just say you haven't turned on your car in a couple of days, maybe even a week or so, and then you go back to turning it on. It's not as loud uh, because the oil clings on with this mixture. It clings on to the to the metal surfaces, and I know all oil clings on, but this just makes it cling on even better. So that's a benefit. Also, um, this is a good Hyperloop oil supplement and Lucas oil stabilizer are like direct competitors. But I chose the Hyperloop instead because on their website it states that uh, it has anti-foaming agents. Um, I'm sure Lucas has that as well, but they didn't mention it. So I just chose um, Hyperloop over, over Lucas for that reason. And um, I know, if I forgot to mention, I know that lubricants foam up, so um, I still went with that foaming up. One thing I can say is that since it, it is a thicker oil, it doesn't have optimal fuel economy, so it, it brings it down. I don't know about how, by how much. I have a 1988 Honda Civic, so it doesn't have like the fuel economy readings like on the dashboard, so... What I can say is that it's noticeable. I don't know how much miles less it gets, but it is noticeable. And what else can I say? It's pretty much it. Do I recommend Hyperloop for an additive? It can work in some cases, like in high mileage cars, but I don't even like um, using aftermarket additives like the ones at Walmart or AutoZone, Pet Boys. 
I really don't like the, the ones that are on the shelf because oil is already formulated with additives. So you'll just be perfectly fine with just engine oils. There's even some uh, manufacturers. I think most of them, like I know my brother's Chevrolet says, do not use any oil additives. So that's pretty much it. Um, these are my properties. I forgot to mention it uh, right here. It did increase because I guess these are the 5W30 specifications that it must meet. So yeah, it increased. So I don't recommend any fuel additive. I mean, fuel additives or fuel additives too, but oil additives. And I mean, it's a good product. Don't get me wrong, but if your engine is doing good, it doesn't burn oil, you've done the maintenance, then there's no reason to use these type of additives. So I'm going to wrap it up. That's pretty much it. That's my experience with Hyperloop. I like the product, but it's just not for me. So thank you, YouTube. Like and subscribe. Have a good day.